Legends of an ancient race of giants are shared among cultures that span across multiple continents from around the world, and are included in the most common religions here on Earth as well, including Christianity, Judaism, Islam, Hinduism, and even Buddhism, to name a few examples. In fact, even the Sumerians, who are the earliest documented human civilization on record, also share details of a race of giants once living here on Earth. Even the ancient Greeks described the giants included among the Greek gods. And there are many different words that have been used to describe the race of massive humans, such as the Nephilim from the Bible, the Thamud people in the Quran, the Deitas in Hinduism, and the Asura in Buddhism. And descriptions of red-haired, white-skinned giants are shared by several different Native American tribes in North America, and even reaching as far away as the Manta people in Peru and South America. Now on this channel, I have made many videos discussing massive megalithic structures found throughout the world, many of which are just as mysterious as they are massive, as there is a huge missing chapter within our ancient history in that we do not know exactly how, or by who, many of these structures were created. And I have received literally thousands of comments from people on various videos stating that these structures were built by giants. Now let me first say that I have always assumed that the various myths and legends of a race of giants existing on Earth were simply exaggerated stories passed down over thousands of years. And I figured that, well, if giants actually did exist, we certainly would have found some skeletons and remains by now, and we haven't. Or have we? I'll be discussing that later in this video. First, let's acknowledge that there are indeed rare examples of people growing to be what many would consider to be a giant. Perhaps the most famous example is Andre the Giant, who was 7 foot 4 inches tall, or 224 centimeters, and weighed 520 pounds, or 236 kilograms. Look at just how big he is compared to Muhammad Ali, who was nearly 6 foot 4, and look at how big his fist is compared to Ali's head. Even compare his hand to a standard 12-ounce beer can. Isn't that just incredible? It seems to me that the word giant is a very appropriate word to describe him, but it must be mentioned that he had a disorder of excessive growth hormone which allowed him to grow so large, and resulted in him dying of a heart attack at 47 years of age. He grew too large for his heart to sustain him, and ultimately passing away due to complications of what's called gigantism. In fact, the tallest human to ever have existed, at least verified through irrefutable evidence, is a man named Robert Wadlow, who reached a height of 8 feet 11 inches, or 272 centimeters. And he was still growing up until he died at the early age of 22. He, just like Andre the Giant, also suffered from gigantism, which is caused by hyperplasia of the pituitary gland, causing his abnormal and excessive growth, which also caused issues in his bones and joints. In fact, he needed braces for his legs just to walk, and he ended up dying actually of an ankle infection in 1940. But neither of these examples are the results of being from a race of giants. I mean, they weren't so large because their parents were giants that gave birth to other giants. So is it possible that the various myths and legends of giants existing in the past are actually just similar examples to modern times where in certain rare examples people grow to be exceptionally large? Let's consider the biblical story of David vs. Goliath, which is also included in the Quran, by the way, with different names. Goliath being Jalu, if I pronounce that correctly. But according to the King James Version of the Bible, Goliath's height, when converted to modern measurements, would be nearly 10 feet tall. Could this be an exaggerated figure for someone who was actually, say, between 7 or 8 feet tall? I speculate simply because I'm always reminded of the telephone game, which of course is a great way of portraying how information always changes when it's passed down through people over time and through different languages. I mean, think about it. If you pick out a current news story and then decide to go research that story from three different news outlets, you're going to get three different versions of the story every time, which is pretty odd considering it's 2018 and all of our technological abilities and abilities to, well, communicate information, and we still can't get things right. So just compare the large discrepancy between the King James description of Goliath being 9 feet 9 inches tall to the Book of Enoch found within the Dead Sea Scrolls which states that Goliath was actually 6 feet 7 inches. Hmm, that is a large discrepancy, and I'll be discussing more about the Dead Sea Scrolls in just a moment. But first it's worth mentioning that the 6 cubits and a span, or the 9 foot 9 inch measurement, 
comes specifically out of the King James Version of the Bible from the year 1611. Just one small example of King James altering the Bible, which is of course a very controversial subject, just like the many allegations that the Vatican had altered the Bible as well, but that's a topic for another video. So, the story of Goliath aside, let's discuss the description of King Gilgamesh of the ancient Sumerians, who is said to have reigned in power for 126 years according to the Sumerian king list. He is said to have been 11 cubits tall, which is equivalent to 18 feet or 5 meters. It is even detailed that his punt poles, used for moving and steering his boat, were 60 cubits long each, which is equivalent to 90 feet or 27 and a half meters. Look at these statues of King Gilgamesh holding a lion. And this has been depicted in many different statues. So, is this a baby lion, or is he a freaking giant? The lion appears to be male based on having its mane, which would also make it an adult. Many people are not aware of just how big lions get. In fact, male African lions can exceed 500 pounds or 225 kilograms. And here are a few pictures for simple comparison, but it's really not until you're up close to one that you realize just how massive they are. I mean, their backs are almost up to your chest, and not to mention just how long their bodies are. Now obviously, these statues do not mean that Gilgamesh was actually a giant, and you could easily infer that he raised lions, and this is symbolic of him training them, or taming them, or controlling them, who knows. But similar depictions are also shown in Sumerian clay tablets as well. And like I mentioned earlier, the Sumerian tablets and statues are from the earliest recorded human civilization. The earliest literature in the known existence of mankind details the existence of a race of giants. And by the way, if you've seen my other videos, I do discuss other civilizations which date back tens of thousands of years earlier. I'm simply referring to documented civilization in this video. But some of these tablets show individuals that are much larger than others, and this is something that has also been depicted in Egyptian hieroglyphs as well. However, this has often been believed to be symbolism of differentiating people of power or royalty to everyone else. So like I mentioned a few moments ago about the Dead Sea Scrolls, it is really interesting to mention that a race of giants, or the Nephilim, who were discussed in the Book of Enoch, which was included within the Dead Sea Scrolls. I've mentioned these scrolls in other videos when mentioning the Book of Watchers, but if you're not familiar, these scrolls were hidden inside caves located on the side of remote desert cliffs near the Dead Sea, and they were buried inside of seal jars for thousands of years. It really makes you wonder why someone or a group of people went to such an incredible extent to hide and preserve the information included in these scrolls. But let's be real, the fact that giants were written about on some scrolls thousands of years ago is not evidence that a race of giants actually existed. And nor are the massive examples of megalithic structures from ancient times. For example, in my Petra video, I received hundreds of comments suggesting that the doors are so big because it was created and inhabited by giants. Look at the so-called monastery located at Petra. This building is 150 feet tall, or 46 meters, and I'm not exactly sure how tall the door is, but just compare it to people. Now look at this photo, and in the top right corner, that is a man standing between those two circles. So why did they choose to make the structure so big? And Which, by the way, it was carved out of the side of a mountain in the remote desert of Jordan. However, when you look at the so-called treasury, which is also located at Petra, you can see that despite the massive doorway, the steps are of normal size. And another great example is at Baalbek in Lebanon. I received many comments from people suggesting that this site was created by giants, and look at the size of the unbelievably large foundation stones at the Heliopolis, and compare them to people standing nearby. And when you ascend into the Heliopolis, look at the size of people compared to the Temple of Bacchus. Simply massive. Well, now look at the door. Obviously, that's amazing. But when you actually look at the steps you climb to reach it, you'll notice that they are of normal size. And it's the same when you enter inside the temple as well, and you can see there on the altar that the steps are, well, I would say standard size. If this was indeed for giants, why are the steps so small in comparison? And of course, when you look at the steps that you climb up to at the Temple of Jupiter, which is located right next to the Temple of Bacchus, I mean, if these were made for giants, again, why are the steps so small and obviously of an appropriate size for humans? Now, of course, that does not mean that giants didn't build these sites for regular-sized people. 
But this, of course, brings us to the big question, which is that if a race of giants did exist, then where's all the evidence? Where's all the skeletal remains? Because it seems like we don't have bones, but we have a lot of tales and myths about it. I mean, we find so many dinosaur fossils, yet we haven't found any of human giants that would have been around far more recently in time. And this is where we get to the conspiracy side of things, where people suggest that, no, wait a second, we have actually found many different skeletal remains of giants, but the evidence has been covered up and destroyed. This stems from many different news articles that were published in newspapers many years ago. Take, for example, one that was published in the New York Times from back in 1897, which described a discovery of a human being over nine feet tall from head to foot. And the skull was described as being half a bushel, which, correct me if I'm wrong, would be something equivalent to around four gallons in size. The article goes on to describe that the skeleton was found, along with other relics, within a mound in Wisconsin. So, one topic that I have not made a video on are the ancient mounds of North America, which many people do not even know exist, and I need to do more research on this topic before I make a video on it, but these mounds are scattered among many different states in North America, including Ohio, Mississippi, West Virginia, Tennessee, Louisiana, Oklahoma, Georgia, Illinois, and a few other states. And many people claim that these mounds are actually burial sites of giants and the skeletons were removed in a cover-up during excavations that were conducted well over 100 years ago. There was actually another article in the New York Times published in 1902 reporting on an expedition of archaeologists that had discovered a giant skeleton in New Mexico, stating that it was 12 feet tall, which by the way, that's about 366 centimeters, and had a forearm that was four feet in length and a well-preserved lower jaw and teeth, get this, teeth as large as the size of large walnuts. Not only that, but the chest was said to have a circumference of seven feet or 214 centimeters. And this story was never heard of again. Did anyone actually discover a 20-foot skeleton? I really can't find an answer about that at all, but you would assume that it's not true. And these are just two articles. If you do a Google search for newspaper discoveries on giants, you'll find quite a few articles that date back more than 100 years, all discussing the discovery of giants, even groups of 200 giant skeletons found in a cave, all of which exceeded nine feet tall. And here are a few examples of various newspaper articles from long ago discussing similar finds. But there seems to be no way to verify if any of these discoveries were actually true, and these stories date back so long ago that nobody involved is alive today. But many people believe that due to the Smithsonian's involvement in many of these excavations, particularly at the ancient mounds, that the evidence was suppressed from the masses due to various reasons, including, of course, religious implications. And different rumors and theories have been developed over the years, even stating that the Supreme Court of the United States had ordered the Smithsonian to disclose their evidence. But according to Snopes, which I do not consider an authority on information any more than I do Wikipedia, which, by the way, I only show Wikipedia screenshots on my videos to show the viewer in a simple, easy way that the topic that I'm discussing is actually documented. That said, Snopes declared this to be a false story and that the Supreme Court did not order the Smithsonian to do anything. But even if it were true that a race of giants had been discovered and that there was a cover-up or the bones had been destroyed, we still should have found something by now. I mean, random people have found dinosaur bones and the remains of woolly mammoths, whether it be construction crews, gold miners, people hiking on the beach or in the woods. Random people have found these remains, yet we don't have people finding the remains of massive humans. I also believe that if giant fossils had been legitimately found, the evidence would be out by now because somebody would surely have taken the payday for those bones. I mean, holy crap, if someone actually found a 12 or a 15 foot tall skeleton of a human, holy crap, would that be a game changer and would make somebody really freaking rich in the process too because those bones would be worth millions of dollars. So surely someone would leak that information out by now, right? What I can tell you is that there is a lot of fake crap out there on the internet involving the discovery of giants. Many different CGI photos that are simply not real, and here are just a few examples that have been around the internet for years. One interesting story, which comes out of Egypt, involved the supposed finger of a giant, which measures 38 centimeters or 15 inches in length, and would have belonged to a human approximately 5 meters in height or 16 and a half feet tall. And these pictures were taken back in 1988, and apparently the man that had possession of the finger was offered money for it, which he refused. 
And then he vanished along with the finger. Neither one of them were ever seen or heard from again, and that was back in 1988. So if it was real, why didn't he submit it for testing? Well, that is unless it actually was real and the guy was, I don't know, murdered and the finger taken from him, <laughs> thus explaining why he and the alleged finger disappeared and have never been heard from since. But maybe it was just a total fake to begin with. A notable example of a potential proof of a giant involves this footprint found in South Africa. Long story short, Dr. Robert Schock, who I admire and trust, has examined the print and he states that it's most likely to be natural, just like the snowman-shaped figure located just a few, feet, a few feet from it. And you can read the details on Dr. Schock's website, but it comes down to the incredibly high temperature in which granite is formed at. Schock believes that this is simply natural, yet obviously an unusual shape, and it of course could be fake as well. But this is a 3 billion year old stone, and it's obviously ridiculous to assume that someone, regardless of their size, would step onto molten magma or lava. And obviously you must ask how someone could make a snowman type shape figure to go along with it. There have been other reasons why people have suggested that a race of giants existed, including various large artifacts of axes or arrowheads. But there could be so many different explanations for this, such as art or decoration. Now, as I did more research on this topic for making this video, it became apparent that the information I've discussed so far is barely scratching the surface of all the information out there related to giants in some way. For example, there were bones found, referred to as the Giant of Castle New, which allegedly is a skeleton that would have been 11 and a half feet or three and a half meters tall. So is this legitimate or not? I mean, if the bones were real, then why hasn't there been any type of modern day study to confirm it? Do you see what I'm saying? Now, I may make another video in the future on the topic of giants, but I ultimately need to see more evidence or legitimate evidence to really buy into it. But at the same time, I'm a very open-minded person and know that we are very ignorant to historical events in the past history of Earth, so anything is possible. But my personal thoughts are that the myths and legends of giants actually refer to giants of mind, that people of incredible intelligence lived long ago, and when you find various megalithic structures that were constructed in most likely pre-Diluvian times in certain examples, more specifically before the Younger Dryas climate catastrophe of 13,000 and 11,600 years ago, perhaps in the several millennia following this event as mankind made its rebound and stumbled upon various megalithic sites, maybe this is how this legend was developed. I mean, after all, the true history of ancient human civilization is far older and advanced than what we were taught in school. And over the course of 12,000 years since the climate catastrophe, that is way more than enough time to erase all the evidence, excluding that of megalithic stones. Ultimately, it is interesting that so many different cultures from across multiple continents from around the world all share this same legend. So I look forward to reading comments that people leave, as obviously I'm not including so many different things in this video because there's only so much time, so... Leave me a comment and share your thoughts, but I'm going to close it up there. I'm Jimmy, this is Bright Insight, hit the like button and subscribe, and I have many more videos to come on a whole wide variety of topics. Take care everybody.